It says in verse 4, he sought after great works. Let's read verse 4. I made me great works. I built in me houses. I planted me vineyards. I made me gardens and orchards and planted trees in them of all kinds of fruits. I made me pools of water to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. Here Solomon is, is becoming that everyman Joe. He's becoming the contractor. He's becoming the, the groundskeeper. He's becoming the, the, the layman. He's becoming the everyday Joe, the plumber, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. He's a worker. He's a, he's a hardworking man, and he's doing all of these, what, great works. He's not doing average works. He's not doing mediocre works. He's getting out there and toiling. Imagine the king coming down to the, to the pauper. And, and working with him. And, and, and you know, it's like that, that, that television show from years ago, Undercover Boss. It's such yeah. a strange thing for the boss to come down and work with them. And yet Solomon comes down and it seems like he, he gets to the point where he starts from the bottom. He's building houses. He's planting vineyards. He's making gardens and orchards. He's doing all those things that before he paid other people to do. He has now become that every Joe, that contractor, that landscaper. He even worked, worked his way up to becoming the boss at that company. Verse 7 says, I got me servants and maidens and had servants born in my house. He already had those things when he was the king and yet now it seems like he's worked and toiled and labored his way. He started a business. He does all these great works around and suddenly he's got servants and maidens and those are, are with him for so long that they actually have children. And he's got all these people he's taking care of within the framework of the great works that he's doing. He's a hard working man. Verse 7 in the second half of that says, also, I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. He's living the American dream. Look at him. He, he's, he's worked himself from the ground up. He started building houses. Next, he was landscaping these houses. Next, he had servants over him. Next, those servants brought forth children. He, he longevity of this business. Now he has great possessions because of all that he has done. He has worked. He has toiled. He has labored. He's working that American dream. He's living the dream. He's got the car. He's got the house. He's got the toys. He's got the expensive uh, surround sound system. He's got the swimming pool. He's got everything, and he doesn't have it because he inherited it. This context seems to suggest he has it because he worked his hiney off for it. He worked his tail off. He did what every man ought to do in order to gain those things. And we see that. It's, it's interesting because the men do the same thing. Yeah, they're really hard workers. They're a really great businessmen. They're a really really awesome philanthropists that do all of these things where they work a business up from the bottom. And yet they're from a standpoint where they've been given unto wine. I don't know how many people I've known that have been functional alcoholics where they're drunk off their, off their rocker all night long and then they get up and the next day they work hard, they labor, they run a business, they do all those things. Five o'clock hits, they're home, they're drunk again. And that cycle just never ends. I, I have a friend that committed a suicide last year because of this and I was so, so sore and so torn but from the outside looking in, you saw this great, successful man that worked in television, that had a nice car, that had a nice house. He had everything. He had that American dream. And yet his family found him in his house, dead, by suicide. There is a sadness and a vanity to that lifestyle, to that cycle of, of drink and work and drink and work and drink and work. And yet that's almost every man. Honestly, that is so many people right now, today. I don't know how many people at work. It's 5 o'clock and I'm like, I can't wait to get home and, you know, let my son wrestle me and, and jump on my head and, and, and do all sorts of fun with him and play with him. And other people are just like, I can't wait to get home and crack a beer. Yeah. It's, it's stupid. It, it's, it's, it's vanity. It's, it's wicked. Give your head a shake. 